we will jump in, uh, for your guys' sake. Uh, Mora brings you to, uh, a, a portion of this, whatever this facility is, um, where she, uh, leaves you guys off in various, uh, like, individual little, sort of like hotel room, in room type of thing. It's very simple, like, bed, table, uh, side tables just a place you guys can like individually in your own space like hang out um you know and rest a little bit after your, your encounter um and after a long rest period uh, uh what you guys discover about this place is uh as the uh, as the tailor hinted at um basically like these injuries that you had sustained with these these creatures as you fought them as you just sort of like rest over the next several hours, like rapidly just heal and then disappear as if they never happened. Um, almost as if there's some sort of a uh, magical long rest type of scenario which just puts you back to perfect condition uh, if you sit still long enough. <laughs> um, so, you guys are all topped up on HP, spell slots, all that stuff restored. Um, period of time uh, does does pass, and then um, Mora comes and, and retrieves you. Um, and uh, she gathers you guys up the next uh, uh, you know, sort of morning, quote-unquote, um, and marches you guys off down another sort of long series of featureless hallways. Um, she brings you guys to the end of a hallway where there is a set of uh, double doors. Um, and as she approaches them, they uh, slide open, unbidden by any, any mechanism that you can see. They just part at her approach. And what is behind those two doors is a small 5x5 five five room with no windows, no doors, and no really discernible features. She gestures to, to all of you sort of trailing behind you. She goes, All right, in you go, little ducklings. This one's a swan, and I walk in. <laughs> <laughs> she sort of like hidden on less. Um, okay, so you guys all sort of pile into this small little box of a room, and she sort of like more or like squeezes in with you guys, and then like excuse me, excuse me, coming through, <clears throat> and like works her way sort of uh, to one side, uh, where she pushes a button. Uh, among a bank of other buttons uh, and it's like the entire room looking in the people <laughs> the <laughs> <ent> <laughs> yeah so, sorry uh, sorry <laughs> uh, the whole room like your stomachs lurch as like this tiny room seems to be into sharply d descent um, and as this happens uh, Mora just sort of like stands there she just like folds her um, folds her hands in front of her um, and she just waits, and you guys descend, and then there's sort of like this little like music, like bum 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 bing, and the doors slide open, and the hallway has completely changed. It is not a hallway at all anymore. In fact, it is a large chamber that is on the opposite side of these doors. Um, and she strides out, and Hello? she says, Okay, here we are. Come on. And you are in a medium-sized room, or a, a, a large to medium-sized chamber. She's a medium to large-sized chamber. Um, everything is clean, sort of smooth, clean lines. Um, still a lot of sort of metal, glass, tile, marble floor. Um, and there are about a dozen depressions in the floor arrayed around each side. Um, they are slightly larger than like a bathtub sunken into the floor, um, and they are all filled with perfectly still, smooth, inky black water. Hot spring At episode? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At the... <laughs> That's my jam. <laughs> At the foot of each of these, uh, these, these basins... There is, uh, there are two candles. Um, they are yay tall, 
uh, made of like a, a bluish black wax uh, with, a, with a wick sticking out of them. Um, both of them are currently unlit. Um, she says, All right, so since this is your first time, uh, I know this is sound, gonna sound a little weird, but it is. Uh, it's, it's actually better. The, the transition is easier if you don't think about it too much and if you don't have a bunch of uh, preparation and, and information bouncing around in your noggins. Um, it, it can be a little disorienting, it, so it is it is better if you just sort of do it. Um, and once you've done it the first time and you, accust you acclimate a little bit to it, uh, it gets easier after that. So uh, if it's all the same... Um, it's not gonna hurt, I promise. Uh, it's a little weird, but uh, if you just follow my instructions, um, you'll be uh, you'll be back over in the prime material in uh, the blink of an eye. Sound what good? What exactly are you gonna do to us? Uh, she says, "Well, uh, to put it real simply, I'm gonna put you in the. You're gonna go in the water, and uh, you're gonna come oh, out I of the water, water. Uh, back in the land of the living." You made that sound way scary when you're describing it before. It's all well. Uh, Wait, Halfway through the explanation, Raku's already kind of climbing into the pool and okay. getting them set up. Uh, Definitely she used she's to this. Like, <laughs> All right, everybody, uh, pick uh, pick your poison. Uh, not poison, not scary. Promise. Just going to going to pool. It's okay. I breathe while I think this, Flair, this is fine. I think Flair going to the water would uh, would scoop a little bit up in his hand and maybe take a sip first. <laughs> okay. Uh, it that doesn't really have any taste. Although weirdly, you do find that like the the water does not seem to react to like the natural like heat that you give off. You know, you're pretty used to like okay. coming into close contact with liquids. Like you can pretty quickly boil small quantities of, of liquid. Um, this seems pretty inert uh, in comparison to like your your ambient temperature. Um, and similarly, yeah, I, I, Aki player would probably. Noticing that, Flair would probably just, like, put his hand in for a few moments, and then his hand out. <sighs> hand back in, the water's not <laughs> boiling yet. Hand back out. Um, <laughs> just, like, just keep that going over sure. and over. <laughs> um, Aki, as you, as you kind of slide into your your little basin, um, you... Kind, like, you just have the innate sense. Like, you can tell this looks like water. It has all the properties of water. This is not water. Um, not in the uh, traditional sense of water. Mm, um, mm -hmm. It is a liquid of some sort, um, but it's uh, it's not not quite normal water. You can tell. All right, um, I'm just so, gonna let my head fall back in. Yeah, so you guys, can, they uh, they only they, they they appear to be uh, you know as you guys are gonna get in, they're only a few feet deep. Um, you know they are wide and long enough that you can kind of easily lay down in them. Um, uh, Flair, you're still, are you still sort of, like, futzing with your pool? Uh, for a moment, until I see everyone okay. else is getting in there, as we, oh, yeah, yeah, and then climb in. So you, like, you, you <laughs> yeah, you, you turn and you go and you get in, and as you, like, turn and get in, you see, uh, you see Mora was, like, three inches behind you. Uh, <laughs> and, like, one of, one of her hands is, like, <sighs> is, like, slightly outstretched, and as she sees you get in, she just, she just, like, grins at you and goes, okay. Wait, 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 were you... <laughs> Wait, were you gonna push me into the dark water? No. That's ridiculous. Okay, here we go, everybody. <laughs> Let's get ready. Uh, lay no. back, relax. Keep all arms, <laughs> limbs, appendages inside the basins at all times during transition. And we will be on our way in just a moment. And she goes around and begins... Uh, Chasing a dog that has acquired a boot somewhere. Um, <laughs> oh, they have, they have, they have, they all have the pets here. Oh my god, somebody. <laughs> all dogs go to heaven. Somebody's animal guide got into the, the, the transition chamber. That's embarrassing. Uh, so, okay. Uh, she goes around. Um, she brings out like a little small tinder box and she goes to each of you at the bases that you're in and she lights one of the two candles and those candles uh they burn blue instantly and once she's lit all six of your candles she just kind of goes to the center of the room and she just is just standing there and uh 
sort of swaying a little bit, and you, like, very quietly, you catch a couple of bars, like, under her breath. She's like, <laughs> humming the elevator music from before. Um, <laughs> and just when, like, this silence stretches on long enough for you to be like, what are we doing? Uh, the second candle in front of each of your, uh, your pools, like, one after another, <laughs> lights on its own. And the flame on these is green. Uh, and as soon as the sixth candle in front of your, your basin's lights, she goes, All right, that means they're ready for you back in the prime material. She says, Take a deep breath if you want. Uh, you don't have to. You don't actually breathe. You're dead. But if it helps, go ahead. Submerge. And just relax. You'll be off. Without any can my candles Can my candles be red instead? She goes, <laughs> yeah, okay. And she just snaps her fingers and they both turn red. <laughs> Better? Yeah, that's, good. that's right. That's right. And then and then just submerges under the water <laughs> following Aki. <laughs> um, okay. No tent diving under. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you guys, as you submerge, um, for most of you, as you sort of go under, we see... You know, in this chamber, uh, as just Mora is is remained, uh, there's you know maybe a couple of bubbles come up. Um, as Thorny submerges, there's like forty seconds of like air escaping from between his various foliage until like, <laughs> it like, finally gets smooth again. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and as you all sink beneath the water, um, sight and sound wink out of existence. You. <sighs> Once you go under, you, like, feel around for the sides or the bottom of the basin, but quickly you realize you're unable to locate them. You're, you're just surrounded by water everywhere you kind of feel. And then you begin to feel this sort of increase in pressure, weight being applied evenly from every direction across your, your whole body. Um, it is the distinctive feel of increasing pressure of depth as you feel your yourself sink deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and this depth builds steadily for maybe a minute and all of your ears pop and then the pressure begins to lessen and the sensation flips and now you are rapidly ascending ahead and above you see the rippling sort of shimmering of the surface of water coming rushing to meet you and the five of you sit upright, breaking the surface of pools of water and grasping to the sides. And you're in a different room. The sleek, clean architecture uh, and the sort of bluish ambient light of Terminus is gone. The floor, walls, and ceiling here are stone. And the light cast across the space is sort of reddish-orange instead of uh, uh, you know, blue. And it's, it's the flickering quality of gas lamps. You see several such lamps bracketed into wrought iron holders along the walls. A woman stands in front of the row of pools you have emerged from. She's dressed head to toe in black garments with a few white linen accents. The outfit that she wears is sort of a hybrid of like a traditional priest priestess's habit um, and functional traveling garb. She wears a cloak um, that is draped around the shoulders adorned with expertly arrayed black feathers and it hangs down to just above her ankles. Um, her face is extremely pale, um, almost as if she's like hasn't seen the sun in years. Um, the lines at the corners of her mouth and her eyes probably put her about in her mid-fifties. Welcome to the land of the living, Irregulars. I am High Priestess of the Church of the Raven Queen here in Waterdeep. My name is Venna. Look to me, here. Do try not to look at each other or down at yourselves for a few minutes. It will make the transition easier. <laughs> uh, I can't see you guys, so if somebody immediately mimed looking at themselves, we will deal with that. Yeah. 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 Did everybody do it? No, the uh, bush did it immediately. Oh, just the bush. Okay. Yeah, the just the <laughs> All right, so for, for you, uh, Thorny, since you immediately do it, uh, 
As you look down at yourself, you immediately, like, you experience this, like, immediate wave of dysphoria. Um, you do not recognize your body. Uh, your, your form is humanoid, um, and it generally matches your, like, base size. Um, the, uh, sort of, like, the, the general shape and, and internal per perception of, like, your gender traits are all matching to this. Um, but you're not a shrub at this point. Uh, you are like a humanoid form. Um, and this form appears to be made of interlocked plates of steel, wood, and stone, covering an internal framework of corded bands. As you look kind of at your compatriots, they are all variants of this form. A hinged jaw, a sturdy, reinforced brow ridge set with faintly glowing blue crystalline eyes and complicated runes are etched into various, various surfaces. Um, Thorny, you are, you are immediately overcome with an extremely powerful wave of disorientation um, as, like, you are, you are in this husk, that they've called it. Um, and it is, like, especially for you, not like the not the right form uh for your for your body at this point um, guys stop getting don't look down <laughs> if i'm capable of even speaking at this I'm... point oh yeah you are it comes uh, out a slightly like echoey um but yes you you, you speak and it does sound like you, at least. Um, I'm going to look... I'm just going to raise my hands to the front of my face and just look at them. Uh, you have you have a similar experience as these, like, pseudo-mechanized appendages come up. They are, they are quite, um, like, graceful and uh, almost in a, you know, uh, from a certain perspective, like, beautiful. Um... But they are not like your hands, and you like you get not sort again. of dizzy, and your eyes cross a little. But all you hear her say is "not again," and okay. she's just like, "Bloody mm. hell, God, damn it, what the gods?" <laughs> just cursing. <laughs> um, I think I think like a child, like immediately when Thorny said, "Don't look down." Flair would look immediately down. So I guess, so the uh, question so... at this point is, did, did anybody not look at themselves immediately? Uh, I did not. Okay. Me too, look. Yeah. Okay, so those of you who don't, you have a little bit of better time. Those of you who do immediately begin like, ah! Um, and the, uh, the high priestess sort of like, she goes, literally, I've been doing this for decades they look every time maybe you should stop saying it then yeah it's kind of like, like reverse psychology <laughs> it's like you're counterproductive with that she one goes, she goes look I've tried it every way if I don't say it they look if I do say it they look sometimes some of them don't in any event try not to look at yourselves you or each other anymore covering their eyes? <laughs> uh, she, blindfold she's, them first uh I never thought of that. You can't seduce anybody like this. She says, she says, Good. focus. Oh, you'd be surprised. Focus, focus <laughs> on me. <laughs> Try to get up. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she says, she says, look at me. Listen to my voice. Try to stand up. Don't think about it. What? Flex your toes, flex your arms, move your joints, roll your head. But look at me. Try not to think about it too hard. Focus on my voice. Um, Rock looks a little bit more ambitious, and he's gonna. He's used to knuckle walking, so he's gonna actually try and see if he can get down onto his his fists and okay. kind of get up. Uh, uh, does he make actually move? A... You're a druid. What's druids? You're, it's a wisdom st wisdom based class, right? Yep. yep. Wisdom. Make a wisdom check. Ooh, this is fun. Ba, 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 ba. Ooh, fifteen. Okay. 
you uh, you do so. So you're sort of you're sort of just like instinctual. You, you do it. You get up. You go to like knuckle you know knuckle walk. And actually, as you climb out of this pool and like drop yourself down and you drop your your hands sort of to the ground, the forearms and wrists and hands and knuckles of of your husk form. With this sort of like whirring and shuffing, they shift and they meld and they they actually slightly change shape. The forearms get a little larger. The the the, the wrist and the hand becomes like reinforced. Um, so you like you naturally form these almost like pseudo gorilla arms, and you just very comfortably fall into this position. Um, and the, the High Priestess kind of looks at you, she says, Oh. She says, I see we have a natural among us. Good. Um, Reminds the, me of the other experiments. The, uh, the next several minutes, um, it, it, there is an adjustment period. Um, you do find that, like, the less you think about it, the more comfortably you are able to, like, operate inside this this surrogate body that they've put you in um and to sort of help keep your minds distracted as you guys kind of move around the room and, and, and flex and, and, and move and, and test these, these these joints out the um the priestess talks to you and tells you about uh husks and about sort of how this process works um she tells you um, your souls can remain bound to the prime material plane in a husk until the candle burns down. And she points, and there is a, uh, a candle about a foot and a half tall uh, behind each of your pools that you emerge from. They are all lit. Um, she says, uh, this time can be extended by uh, a cleric of the Church of the Raven Queen performing a ritual um, to extend your time that you can remain connected before you must return to uh, Terminus to Recharge is not the right word, but um, the prime material is not your natural plane. You can only stay here for so long. Uh, if your husk is destroyed beyond functionality while you are here, uh, your soul will be released and you will return to Terminus. Uh, you, uh, under most circumstances, cannot die while you are here. Um, but the experience, I'm told, is not pleasant, so I don't recommend it. Uh, you will be, uh, at this point, beginning to notice that all tactile sensations of a physical body are functional while in the husk, though uh, you might find that they are a bit dulled. Um, uh, an embrace or a handshake might feel more like a dull pressure, uh, though conversely, if somebody lops off one of your arms, uh, it will hurt, but it won't incapacitate you. You are significantly more resilient than uh, flesh and bone mortal form. Uh, you don't need to eat, drink, breathe, or sleep, but you can if you desire the sensation. The husks are equipped to uh, partake in all of those uh, all of those processes. Um, if you exert energy or sustain damage to the husk, you will require a period of inactivity to recover and make repairs. Um, husks are sturdy. Uh, more advanced versions even more so, but they are not indestructible, and they are quite hard to replace, so please make every effort to keep them intact while you're using them. Um, as you grow in, in power and utilize more advanced husks, uh, she specifically seems to be talking now to you, Aki. Um, she says, Your psychic image of yourself will begin to manifest physically over top of the husk. Some of the most powerful irregulars uh, that I've come across are able to project their image so well that they are very nearly indistinguishable from flesh and blood at a glance. One question. Of course. Will I ever get laid again? <clears throat> you will find ever. that tactile... There is a question. She, she sort of like, she sort of like puts one, you will find that all tactile sensations oh. of the physical body are functional in the husk. Uh, <laughs> How long does it usually take for our 
forms to take shape. Uh, she says that uh, that depends. Uh, for some irregulars, uh, months. For some years. Uh, for some, even longer. Uh, we do have a system in place to handle such things for newer irregulars or those who do not have a strong uh, psychic internal image of themselves and thus don't uh, don't project a particularly uh, convincing uh, overlay to their husk um, do, do you have like a like a costume shop or something we can kind of just work with for the time being she sort of she nods says, yes in, in a sense we do uh, husks, uh, irregulars, and the existence of the black butterflies is a closely kept secret. The world is not ready to know that souls of the dead can come back and walk among the living uh, in these forms. We, the clerics of the Raven Queen's Church, uh, she gestures like mostly to her outfit, and she pulls like uh, from kind of a, a sling around her back. She she pulls like a uh, a shrouded um, kind of like a hooded thing with like a vaguely bird shaped mask. Um, pretty similar, Hadrian, to, like, your, your get-up in the, um, uh, it, it, as you appeared in Terminus. Um, she says, all of us cover ourselves from head to toe and never reveal bare skin or our face to anyone outside of the church. It is part of the church's traditions, but it serves as a way to cover for the irregulars operating in husks. When setting foot outside the temple walls, at least until they are able to manifest themselves uh, in a convincing enough form, they, that is to say you, will have to be covered. We will provide you with garb you can uh, apply to yourselves that will, uh, for outsiders to the church, make you appear as clerics. Do we have to be clerics? Uh, she says. You're not uh, really the religious sort. Uh, she says, "Cleric, when it comes really? to the Church of the Raven Queen, is sort of a broad term." She says, "Whatever particular garb, arms, and armament you require, we will provide for you. Uh, the the uh, masks and, and cowls and coverings that we have are, are greatly extensive." Um, we do, she sort of gestures, we have sort of a black and white theme, but uh, outside of that, you, uh, you can disguise yourself uh, in whatever types of garments you wish. It's, it's not all uh, robes and, uh, and habits. On that note, I would like to attempt to disguise self to look like myself. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, you can definitely do that um, and she kind of looks at you and she says, she says indeed that is uh, that is useful but uh, it is not a surefire or permanent enough sol solution right 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 <laughs> makes me feel better <laughs> um, she says um, if you're feeling more comfortable with the the husks, we will uh, get you on your way. Um, a handler will accompany you at all times while you are on the Prime Material Plane. Um, there are special members of the Order who serve as handlers for irregulars. Uh, we call them engineers. They are highly trained in building uh, and field repairing husks, uh, the specific rituals to extend your time on the Prime Material Plane, and a myriad of other things, um, all specifically trained to assist you in whatever your business might be. We got spies following us. She says, "Make sure mm, we're doing our job." She says, uh, "Think of it more as uh, something of a personal assistant. Uh, their sworn duty is to uh, assist you uh, in any fashion that they are capable of." So, like healers. It's very specialized, considering your bodies are mechanical and not right. flesh and bone. Uh, but yes, uh, they All also right. provide intelligence when able and uh, have uh, quite a number of tricks up their sleeve that make them invaluable to irregulars while they go about their business on the Prime Material Plane. And she says, which reminds me, 
Um, and she, uh, she kind of moves back over the door and she <clears throat> knocks on it twice. Um, and, uh, a woman slips in. Uh, she is, uh, about five foot eight, um, athletically built. Uh, she's wearing, um, the black and white sort of Raven Queen cleric, uh, garb. Though hers is, is much more, um, like form-fitted and clearly suited for range of motion and, like, riding and fighting potentially um they're much more like a, a set of like traveling leathers than really like uh like a nun's habit like the high priestesses are um she, her face is not currently covered she has um uh kind of like um fairly dark dusky skin um and like a really impressive like large um sort of like afro mane of like um, sort of frizzy uh, frizzy hair that, that hangs like just kind of to her shoulders and sort of like bounces as she walks um, she uh, wears a you see that there's a, a pendant around her neck that is um, s sort of uh, sort of like cone shaped um, it has like a metal tip and then like a spiral that gets slightly larger as it goes up um, and it hangs at the end of a chain um, and the high priestess is this is Eshkaro. She will be your engineer while you're on your mission today. And uh, Eshka kind of like, Hey! Pleasure to meet you. She, um, she kind of like looks at the, uh, uh, the husk that you're in. Um, uh, you, you get the sense that, like, she, you know, you, you've, you've, like, elused yourself over this. You get the sense that she's, like, checking you out a little bit, but also, like, she can see the husk underneath. Um, and she then sort of cycles through the rest of you, looking, um, looking at all of you. Um, she spends a little bit extra time, um, Raku, uh, she, she comes sort of up to you as you've, like, you're still in this sort of like slightly converted form. Um, she comes up and uh, as she approaches you, she, she sort of like gestures towards one of your your hands. She says, "May I?" See what not? She says, "I just like to look, see what you've done there." It's she, what so I'm she, used to. Uh, she sort of turns. Not being a human over she says good you pick this up quickly I don't think you'll have any trouble with full transformations given enough time she sort of looks at the group of you and she says is there anything you guys think you need before we head out branches wine uh, she goes Okay, and okay. Uh, she points the door she came through. Up the stairs, head out to the courtyard. Uh, she she turns towards the, uh, the high priestesses. They'll be outfitted before they make their way. I'll make their preparations at the stables. And uh, the high priestesses, yes, we'll take care of it. And she says, all right, cool. Uh, she goes, wine, branches, Thanks, and darling. and horses, and she heads out. Oh wait, should we have asked for weapons, guys? Uh, the high the high priestess goes. We're visiting the armory now. Come. Rocky's like, I don't necessarily have a problem in that department. And his claws gonna grow up. <laughs> yeah, the, the 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 hands of the husk go like. <laughs> and like these like blades come out of them um and uh you guys are led into the next chamber where uh there is uh just a whole range of any like any and all like armor garments um equipment that you you know you could possibly need and then a whole wall of um different they're all like white 
um, with sort of like uh, porcelain-esque colored. Um, a lot of them are like bird themed, um, but they're all different manner of masks that you can equip yourself with. And as the High Priestess leads you in, she says, Equip yourself in whatever way you find uh, best suits your needs. Select a mask and you can be on your way. Um, so, at this point, because I'm looking at the clock here, as you guys equip yourself, um, what does the mask that you choose for yourself look like? Are they all birds? No. A lot of them are. Uh, but there, there is... This is... Uh, let your imagination run wild. What... what? You think it up, we assume it's there. What What does your mask look like that, that you choose? Um, if you've seen... Like... Uh, the uh, clerical symbol for Obed High, where it's like this earthy skinned face with a bunch of leaves around it, would they happen to have like a mask of a bit high? Sure. There is like uh, I'm assuming there's one that's like an amorphous animal. It looks like it has like the ears of a fox, the like nuzzle of a of an ape, and like the eyes of a cat. Uh, he's gonna take that one and just put it on. Okay. Flair uh, finds a mask that is in the shape of a bird. It has a uh, 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 like a jet black uh, beak on it, and at the bottom, the feathers are black, and they slowly turn from gray to stark white at the top, and they twist and kind of point up like his hair does. And he puts <laughs> that mask on, and then looks towards uh, Hadrian. It's kind of like it resembles what Hadrian looked like whenever he first saw him. So Hadrian turns to him, and as Hadrian turns to you, you realize that Hadrian is wearing what to you looks like the exact same mask he had on. <laughs> like the same, like, white with the black silk. <laughs> you can't wear that dress. I'm wearing that dress. <laughs> Um, Aki chooses um, a fairy dragon, okay. probably in like purples and blues. Okay. All right. So, a few minutes later, armed as is befitting to whatever your particular wants might be, dressed in appropriate garb uh, that is uh, available only in shades of black. Uh, that does seem to be the Raven, the Raven Queen's church's uh, thing. Um, cloaked, cowled, covered head to toe. We see six individuals emerge from the doors at the front of the large stone temple to the Raven Queen. And waiting for you down a set of steps near a small stable inside of a courtyard is now hooded and masked themselves with a uh, a mask that looks a little bit like an owl. Um, you recognize the frame of Eshka Ro. Uh, she stands um, with a bottle of wine in one hand uh, and like a big pile of like brambles and stuff beside her on the other side. As you, like, look around, you guys are clearly in the middle of, like, a dense metropolitan city here. Um, it is, like, stone, and you look out over the, um, uh, over the buildings. Um, you, you see that the, the city is large and sprawling. It's, it's set way, set way up, uh, it's, it's part of the way it is set up, like, uh, the massive slope that dominates the city. Um, higher up, the buildings get increasingly like, large and intricate, um, and then there's, like, just a massive castle that juts to the highest, the highest point, um, 
the topography. You see several large airships meandering lazily to, uh, toward or away from the city, these massive magic fields encircling them. Uh, to the west, you see like an expansive harbor, but as far as you can see, just suburban or city, city urban sprawl. Uh, you have no idea where Eshkaro got uh, a pile of brambles of this this magnitude uh, within like 15 minutes, um, and she is standing in front of uh, uh, six uh, black riding horses, saddled and ready to go. And since it is 8 o'clock, and I do not want to cut into Kindred's list times, uh, it does look like we might have to end on a cliffhanger, folks. Hey! <laughs> uh, so I, 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 I smell recurring series? Maybe? Oh, wow. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, hell yeah. Um, I, do, I do very much like the sort of the iconic image of like the five of you in your sort of... Uh, masked masked garb uh standing standing atop this uh uh this staircase silhouetted against the the interior of the the church of the raven queen um as uh, as we wrap up our session but uh i uh i cannot possibly bear to take where we've already cut five minutes into kindred list time um and that's unacceptable that's no problem. <laughs> uh so I, I yeah i think that's gonna be we're gonna have to end on a cliffhanger we're gonna have to come back to to finish the story as the uh as the group prepares to set out and somehow track down the thing that they let loose on the prime material plane when they crossed over upon their death. <laughs> <laughs>